What's going on, everybody? I am Real Estate Randy, and for those of y'all, if this is your first time to the channel, please do me a huge, huge favor. Subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to be honest. I just found this out. If you wait until like three minutes into the video and like the video at that point, it's going to give me a lot more, uh, you know, buzz. I think that's the word I'm looking for. But, yeah, if you could just wait a couple minutes. And then hit that like button for me, too. And then if you would love to, please just leave a comment, man. The more interaction I get, the more I can get this information out to other future home buyers. So this video is for my home buyers, okay? What I'm going to talk about today is something that could potentially save you a thousand, if not more, dollars a month on your monthly mortgage. Now, if this is something interesting to you, please stick along. I'm going to be talking about assumable mortgages. <laughs> So I know some of you are asking me, Randy, what in the hell is an assumable mortgage? Well, listen up. This is what it is. Basically, what assumable mortgage is, is some lenders, uh, FHA, VA, and USDA, allows the seller to transfer over their existing mortgage to another buyer. So basically, the remaining balance will stay the same, the interest rate will stay the same, and the term, so as, as far as how many more years they have left on that loan, will stay the same. It just transfers over to you as the new homeowner. Now, you might be asking, why would you go ahead and do this? Well, let me explain. This is the exact reason why. With right now, the interest rates are so high, they're in the upper 6%, right? Your mortgage payment is going to be a lot more, which means typically you can afford less house. Now, if you find a seller who has a mortgage that they've had for at least two years, you are now sitting at the interest rates that were a part of 2020, 2019, 2021, when we had super low interest rates. So you get the benefit of that. And I'm going to show you here in a minute exactly how that translates into numbers. So you might be asking, real estate Randy, how does a some boom mortgages work? Well, let me explain. Check this out. So let's say you have a seller who has a remaining balance on their loan for, let's just say, $400,000, okay? And the price of the home is $500,000. So you can go to that seller and ask them, hey, do you have an assumable loan? And if they do, they can be like, yes, well, uh, I would like to purchase this home with that, with that being my um, financing option, assuming your loan, which that means now you're going to get that loan for $400,000. Here's the thing. This is the caveat. The, the $100,000 that's left to purchase the home, you are going to be responsible for to bring it to the table, right? So that means you're going to have to have some, a little bit more skin in the game. So if you do that, what that means is now you still have your $100,000 worth of equity and you saved a lot of money on your monthly payment because you're looking at their interest rate, which could be anywhere from 2 to 5% depending on when they purchased in the last few years. So this is going to save you money in the long run. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where in the hell am I going to get $100,000? There are options where you can get a second mortgage if you're not in a position to use cash to pay that difference. A second mortgage is still going to give you that rate, but it's going to be at a smaller amount. So if you're only financing $100,000, you're only paying 6% on that $100,000. Okay, so let me explain. There are two different ways you can go about an assumable mortgage. The first way is called simple assumption. What this means is you're not really going through the lender. You're just going through the seller and the buyer. The only drawback from this is that the lender is still going to hold the original seller uh, liable for this if you decide that you ain't going to pay that no more. So that's why you can see a lot of sellers are not going to go this route. Now, the second way is novation. Innovation, this is where you have to go through the lender and you have to qualify through all of the original things that you would qualify to get a mortgage to begin with. You just have to qualify with them and then it gets transferred over to you and the seller is no longer liable for anything. So there's another key factor to this that you need to know as well. We need to know which loans are eligible for assumption. Typically, any government-backed mortgage loan is allowed to use assumption, which, like I said before, includes FHA, VA, and USDA. Conventional loans typically do not do assumption uh, mortgages, but they will every once in a while for a special occasion. What are those special occasions? I have no idea. 
So pretty much all FHA loans are pretty much assumable as long as the lender approves. Any FHA loan that's after December 15th of 1989 must be approved by uh, the lender as far as your credit worthiness. Now, all of VA loans are assumable as well, but they have special qualification and rules that you must go by in order for you to utilize this practice. Loans that have originated before March 1st of 1988 are allowed to be assumable to anybody and everybody. So if you can find that, you go on by means, go do it. The only problem is most people that have that home from that time, their house is probably paid off because they refinance. It's no longer originated before that. So that might not be an option for you. Now, loans that originate after that, you have to be approved by the lender themselves. And there's also more qualifications that you have to have. So you'd have to be an active duty member, a veteran, or an eligible surviving spouse. USDA loans are assumable in two different ways. So there's a new rate and term way, and that basically means you are creating a new loan, but at the previous balance, and you have your new rates and your terms and amortization as well. Then there's also the same rates and uh, terms, which is usually um, just for if you're transferring title to family members. Now, as far as qualifying for these assumption mortgages, it's gonna be the same qualification that you would have typically for any FHA loan you're trying to get, any uh, VA or USDA loan. So that's gonna pretty much stay the same. So you have a very good chance if you can qualify for a original regular type of home loan, then you can uh, qualify to uh, do an assumption mortgage. Now let's talk about the meat and potatoes. What are the pros? What are the cons? We're going to start with the pros first. Pro number one, and one of the most important one, is low interest rates, fewer closing costs, so no appraisal. And then last but not least, well, it's probably not last. There's probably a lot more, but this is another big one. It's going to be less debt to you. Now, the elephant in the room, let's talk about the cons, okay? So, yes, there is a higher down payment because you have to create the difference bring up the difference between what is left on the loan and what the new sale price is. Because the seller is still entitled to their equity. So that is a con. But if you can utilize this, in the long run, it's going to be benefit you. And I'm going to show you here in a minute in this example. Con number two, credit and income requirements. Another con, if you're utilizing the VA loan route, the, the seller will not be able to use that VA loan again until the original assumed loan is paid off. So that's a negative for that seller. So typically you're not going to see this happen. So another con is potential fees. So you could have to pay assumption loan fees. And there also could be an instance where if that if that seller did not have enough equity in their home and they're in the um, where they have mortgage insurance still on that home, you're still going to be liable for those even if you brought in way more than 20% to to purchase the home just because the price of the home was so much more than when they purchased it. So that could be a con as well. I'm going to show you an example, and I'm going to share my screen with you, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can save some money. Check it out. All right, guys, so now I'm going to share my screen with y'all so we can break it down and look at the numbers and to make it a little bit more tangible and easier for y'all to understand and grasp exactly what I'm talking about. Like I expressed before, this is not going to work for every buyer. There's uh, positives and negatives, and I'll go over that at the end, but this could possibly work for you. So let's just say in this scenario, you're looking at a home that's uh, priced at $500,000, and you're going to put your 4% down. That bringing you, you have to bring twenty thousand dollars to the table. You're at an interest rate of six point nine one six percent. Now, once you reach a credit score of seven forty, as you can see, right here, you typically going to get the same, the same interest. So you seven eight. It doesn't really change. So that doesn't really matter, right? Anyways, getting back to it, you can see that you have a monthly mortgage payment. This includes taxes and fees of $4,229 a month. I want you to remember that, okay? So I'm gonna grab my calculator here and we're gonna, to make it easier, we're gonna be $4,230. All right, now let's look at someone who bought their home in January of 2021. And let's say they bought it for $480,000. They put 4% down, they owed 19,200 to closing. 30 year mortgage, just the same. And they're paying $2,603.12. So let's go back to the calculator. 
and we are going to subtract 2600 just to make it easier keeping all the numbers simple and you've just saved per month 16,000 16,000 that'd be great and you just saved $1630 a month now let's multiply this by 12 That's almost $20,000 per year. Let's keep that in mind. That's a lot of money that you just saved in that one year's time. That's like, you know, that's typically what you were about to bring to closing, right? So just remember that number, 19560 But let's break this down even more. Let's go further into it because we need to find out what you actually going to have to bring to closing. So now let's go to what their loan balance would be today, right? So their loan balance, as you can see right here, would be around 439,785. So we're gonna just make that 440 for simple math as well. So we're gonna take the $500,000 that they're asking for. You're gonna subtract the 440. So you're going to be responsible for bringing $60,000 to closing to cover that gap and give uh, the seller their equity. And there's going to be other fees as well, but just to keep it simple, we're going to make it as simple as possible. $60,000 is what you need to bring in the table. Now, do you remember exactly how much money you're saving each and every year? Almost $20,000. So in three-year time, you can get your $60,000 back, right? So now in three years time, you can get your original investment back because you're saving almost $20,000 a year by um, assuming their loan. Not just that, because it goes another level as well. Now, in three years time, so that's going to be 2026, January. Now look at how much the uh, you have left in your loan, $407,000. So now you have almost $100,000 worth of equity compared to the purchase price of when you purchased the home. You got your $60,000 back. And then there's one more level on top of that. So depending on where state you are, typically your house is going to gain more equity year over year. So you can add that to the mix too. So think about how much equity you could earn in three years time by doing an assumable loan. Yes, there's a little bit more of an upfront cost, but you can gain that equity back relatively quickly with how high these interest rates are. Okay, guys, so that was the video. Hope that you got some value out of it. Please let me know in the comments if you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Like I said, if you've made it to this point, then definitely give me a thumbs up, please, and help me out so I can get my channel out there and I can help as many buyers uh, and sellers in any and every market. I mean, I obviously practice in the Austin market, but a lot of this information is universal and can help a lot of potential future home buyers and sellers. Until next time, I hope you have a great day and always remember to stay safe.